everybody, it's me again. It's been like a month or so. And the difference with this video is that we are not actually revealing anything that's come out yet. What I'm going to be showing you is progress on the new system, as well as what I plan on building. So, first things first, the update is not going to be 2.5.0, it's going to be 3.0.0. I'm going onto a whole other numbering system. Why is that? Well, the first thing, big change I'm going to be doing is separating the path and security system completely from the server and database, and instead relying on modules for both the server and the database. Now, it's going to work basically as good as it did before, except easier for me to program, and the database and server are going to be part of a new project that, at the moment, I'm calling Server Team, because it looks cool. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it looks, it sounds cool. I like that. And here's a sneak peek of the work I've done so far. So, this is the server team server. It's got all the same stuff here. If I was to swipe a card, it now has passes as a precursor for whatever is entered. Looks pretty. Server team version 3.0.0. Two modules loaded because this has the sector system and the passes system, which server sectors relies on passes. The port shown. That's basic, so that's another thing that's going to be happening is with ports. I'll explain that later. The, mo the menu on the bottom actually works now. You can add modules, which I might be adding it where you can add the modules to the server from the bit database. Delete all modules. Hide the port, which I'll do right now. And then close the menu. And I'll explain the hi once again, I'll explain port stuff later. All of these are already updated to ports, I think. I'm going to have to fix that, though. Pretend you never saw that. I haven't updated that or tested it. Database. Here's a new database. Don't mind that. Dev is not a module that's been built yet. As you can see, it's a lot empty here. And a lot of this is temporary, I'll make it look a little bit better, but passes and sectors, those are the two modules I've added so far. This list will also extend all the way down here when I finish. Passes. Here's the pass thing. It's a lot more open, it's a lot cleaner. It looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Works just as nice as it did before, all the buttons are over here now list buttons and stuff and then the sectors which I have improved drastically here's one sector the only sector the placeholder sector I don't remember if this is fixed it is not fixed oh because it doesn't you can't update right You can add sectors like that. Scratch that. I think I forgot to make this. It doesn't update it, but that will update the name. And then down here is how you add passes to the sector. And you'll notice there's a big difference first off, like priority and the bypass type is part of the passes. And you can select staff. So if I select, I think this is fixed now. It is not oh, oh yeah I haven't updated the sector like this is a little bit of an older sector module version like you can see if I go into here this kind of clips into this one it's fixed on the updated version I have but not in this not that's currently upload not the one that's in the game right now but I can set it to can go which is a boolean I can't click it 
bypass type for this one. I'm going to set the open door. Priorities. This is the priority order for passes. So let's say I want, this is, has a priority, simple priority of three. I'm going to add it. Or I'm not. <laughs> I will fix that later. But basically, if I have a priority pass of three, and then a priority pass of one, the one with the priority of one will be checked first, then priority of three. So if someone has one but not the other, like if someone has one that's superior, that one will be the one that it bypasses, uses the bypass type. So higher, if you want lower level people to only be able to open the door while higher level people can disable it, you can. Before it was just random, it just went based on the list nicer and better for the different bypass types for different passes also there will be list buttons down here just like in the passes area like that I don't have it yet another thing I plan on doing is making it so that if you add a var delete a var edit a var you won't have to close out of the database and reopen it all you have to do is change it press OK, and it will change it right here instantly. You can see it's updating the list over there. Right now, I haven't figured out what to do on updating list, but every time you click into modules, it will update the list. And you can also specify it inside each mo specific module. All right, next up, yep, um, user login. I plan on adding users to the server, so you can have different users with different permissions like say user 1 can do anything they want user 2 can edit passes and sectors user 3 can only edit sectors like permissions like that each with a specific login and such alright next up message identification basically ports what if two people on the same server, which I've noticed because I saw, I saw a video of a guy using my server, and I was thinking, wait, what if they two multiple people on the server want to use the same system? Well, that's where ports come in. So I've changed the port. So it used to be 199 was the port for every single device. Well, now you could specify the port, and it's defaults to 1,000. 199 is now the sync port, which I'll explain right now. So currently I have this set to 1050. 1050 is the port it uses. If the port is hidden, and I go over here and start it, it asks what the port, what port is the server running off of. So you have to specify it manually. However, if the port is shown, you can both enter it in manually like that if you wanted to, say, go into the configuration of here, right here, if you wanted to change it there. Or, also, with the sync port, you can just start up the program and it automatically syncs to that port. Now why wouldn't you want it to have it open all the time? You want to hide it? The reason you might want to hide it is if you're not setting up any devices, you should probably hide it because most devices have a configuration file inside of them that saves the port. And if that configura if I sh configuration file is missing, then it will ask the sync port. If you have it open all the time, then people can just connect to the device and set up just mess w around with it like that. If the sync port's hidden, there's no way for them to know the port unless you tell them or they get onto your server and stuff. Just a way to separate systems and let you do whatever you want. Diag port stays the same for everything because that's really a one-time connection kind of thing. Very empty broadcast. Doesn't really matter. 
door control easy setup module. This, I haven't built anything of it yet, but what I plan on doing is adding another module that's a database side only module that runs off of the PaaS system and lets you set up door settings and such, like set up passes and all the door types easily inside the database. Then, it w if you have a OpenOS floppy connected to the computer, you can install that onto a drive that's also plugged into your server right here. You c it will install OpenOS, or if you want, not open o install OpenOS and only do what you want. Then, then it will install the the configuration file for what you've done so far onto the disk as well as a finish program and what you do is take that to the door controlled computer you want just put the drive in here run the finish program and complete the flash complete the last configurations like use the UUID for the door stuff redstone colors if you didn't specify it in there as well as door controls and all that. So finish it up. Then it will set up all the necessary files like the control Lua. And then that's all. Then you can just start the controller and everything's set up. Basically all I'm doing is making the setup for doors easier from having it... It used to be hard-coded. Then I moved it into the text file. Then I made the auto-installer to be able to set up just by entering the key. Then the door editor, which I could use the diagnostic tablet to edit doors. Then the just using this GUI right here, using the GUI on MinOS to set it up. It's just getting easier and easier. One of the last things I can remember off the top of my head would be the accelerated door setup. So you know how if you want to use the accelerated door setup, you have to remember the four digit code, it's random, and such. No more. It just uses the diagnostic port. I don't know why I did, didn't do that earlier. It's so much simpler. All you have to do is start up the accelerate door setup. Say yes on here. It'll wait for a connection. Go to the tablet. Turn on the program. Select your accelerated door setup. It'll automatically connect. Simple as that. Hi, it's me again. After a decade. So why, one thing I forgot to mention is with the door setup, we are swapping from multi and single doors to one single door, the door system. It's basically going to be just multi doors. So that means all, all single door systems will automatically be converted via code to the new, to the multi door system. Also, the auto installer has a simplified single door setup, so if you only want to add make one door, you can use that and it will set it up all for you just like it would have been if you were using single door setup before. As well as multi doors can now have multiple readers linked to one door. This is also because I'm moving single doors to multi doors because single doors had the advantage of all the mag readers being able to control one door. Simple as that. Well, that's all you need to hear from me. Back to the finishing outro. I believe that's it. I will all what this what this means is that I'm going to be having kind of I'm going to be working more on the server team system than the passive system once I get everything fully fleshed out and working. Then maybe I can spend my time on other things I want to test myself on. Like one thing I want to try is a warehouse. So you can, where robots, you could set up a certain area of space inside your world. Specify location locations on the database where chests will be and stuff, and then the server will automatically set when when you put items into the system through the robots, they'll sort them out into the chests automatically, save them onto the server, 
on the database. You can pull them out, and the robots will go around and grab stuff. Just a little fun project like that challenge myself because that is difficult <laughs> all right i think that's it if you enjoyed this if you have any questions you can ask me on discord ask me on github i'll be happy to help i'm ready to help with anything you need i think that's it all right have a good rest of your day guys and i hope i can get this out soon see ya